bringing entertainment to thousands of people. Through its magic, we are able to enjoy a combination of the radio, motion pictures, and the stage, right in the comfort of our own homes, simply by pushing a button and turning a dial. These cells with their electrical charges are scanned by a stream of electrons, completing 30 pictures a second. Compare that crude picture with these of today, and you can judge for yourself how far along the road to perfection television has traveled. Most people still today think that all entertainment uh, to do with movies, drama, is, is, is there for nothing more than their entertainment. It never ever was that case. Of course, television can't perform such miracles as this, yet. But perhaps there's no harm wishing that it could. The greatest social, social med uh, messages are promoted through movies and drama, high drama, through the fixation of emotive sequences, emotional sequences, not logical, factual sequences, but pushing points across in an emotion, emotional way which register and fix in the mind. So emotional content is very, very important rather than going through an actual discussion or an argument using logic and facts. There's no debate. And when you're being downloaded through fiction, your guard is down, the censor part of your brain is not in, uh, in action. It isn't saying, yes, I agree with this, I disagree with that, as you would in a debate or a lecture. You're actually in an alpha state, being completely downloaded with new ideas. Throughout history, social engineers have refined techniques designed to control large populations. Uh, about a hundred years ago, this big organization with many branches, uh, they wanted to rule the world basically using Britain as a nucleus of, of a system, an embryo, uh, which also was going to be joined with the US uh, under the Anglo-American establishment, uh, wrote about the kind of culture and the changes of culture over a hundred year period that they would actually design, implement and bring in. And um, H.G. Wells talked about it too. He talked about arenas. He says arenas could be put up across the world for sports, for instance. Now at that time, sports was something that children, uh, school children were into. Adults became adults and got onto adult things. So it was unimaginable at the time that people could actually believe that uh, uh, there was even a need for adult sports and entertainment, never mind having ar arenas built across the world. But he said we can do this and foist basically a sports culture for the males. Using a tribal system, we're all tribal to an extent, that's why we even bother to vote for a tribal leader. Uh, this is well understood, that's why we're supplied with these leaders. And because the, the average man was to become more disengaged from his own destiny, as the expert class arose, it was decided that, that the males would get their, their, their outlet basically. Um, being gradually becoming helpless as, as males through sports. Therefore, they'd have a tribal team they could identify with. Uh, they could um, cheer them on as they were winning. In their own personal lives, they were getting nowhere. They were getting disenfranchised, in a sense, as experts took over um, decision-making for them in all kinds of fields. So this was psychology at use, uh, planned before they even implemented the sports. Uh, when radio came along, of course, they, they, they used that to the maximum. Uh, sports for the men, um, soaps basically for the women. And then in came television, as I say, with its alpha state, its hypnotic state. And sure enough, around the 1960s, really, 50s and 60s, it took off. It really, really took off. Uh, and men became glued on Saturday nights to the sports shows. A culture industry, which is called by its own the culture industry. The Soviet Union had a department called the culture industry. Their actors and directors were called the cultural leaders, leaders, because they would, like a computer, people are like computers, um, all you have to do is keep giving them new updates every so often, and you can change an entire country or a nation or a block of nations who are all getting the same 
uploads, upgrades at the same time along certain paths. Today we call it political correctness. Most people want to belong to their peer group. They want to be the same as everyone else when it comes to opinions. In fact, they judge their own personal sanity by bouncing ideas off their, their neighbors and friends who will answer back and agree on these same topics in kind. It doesn't matter if the topics or, the, or what you're given are facts or, or utter nonsense, as long as everyone agrees at the same time, you'll say, well, I'm sane, and your friends will all agree because they've had the same information given to them. If it's on TV and a famous face uh, says something, then it must be true. He doesn't have to show you facts or anything else. You'd, you've been brought up with these faces. That's why they keep these guys on television into their 70s and 80s. You've grown up with this father figure who's on television every night at six o'clock uh, in your house, in your room, staring right at you. Uh, and he's a father figure. Would he tell you a lie? That, that, so you naturally never suspect him. And this same man will lead you through new topics. He'll, he'll introduce experts on the topics. They'll have a little summary at the end of every talk. And you are now left with the conclusion that's presented to you. As you, you don't arrive at it, it's given to you and it's good enough for you. When I was growing up, people were talking on their front porches, neighbors were playing baseball, there were nightly barbecues. You don't see that anymore. We've lost our communities. You drive through neighborhoods, you see the blue glow of television sets. We're losing our humanity. So if you want to rebel against the globalists, the social engineers, Start by turning the TV off a few hours a day and actually getting to know your neighbors. Getting outside that comfort zone, expanding your horizons. By coming together as communities, by getting to know our neighbors, we defeat the social engineers. We're programmed today uh, perfectly just like machines. We tie this, this in with the Brzezinski. Brzezinski said in two ages, now this guy was way up with the NSA. He was a, he's a master geopolitician. Uh, he works, in, he admits he works in, in 20, 50 year periods to do with geopolitics in other countries. But he said himself, the public will shortly be unable to think or reason for themselves. It was meaning by the, the form that, that of, of, of uh, information that was given to them, the type, the, the formulas that were in use then in the 1970s. He says, eventually, they'll be unable to think or reason for themselves. They, and eventually, he said, they will expect the media uh, to do all their thinking and reasoning for them. Well, that's happened today. That, that's why people today can't think outside of the programming from television. Zbigniew Brzezinski, Obama's main foreign policy advisor, talks about how a cult of personality can be artificially manufactured to influence the masses. In the first months of my administration, uh, to pull our economy... <coughs> oh, goodness. Sorry about that, guys. Um, to pull our economy back from the brink, uh, including the largest and most sweeping economic recovery plan in our nation's history. We, we're gullible, but we're also willingly gullible. We want a human being, a big daddy, to come along and make everything right for us. And as long as we believe that, we'll always basically get shafted. In addition to John, sorry, the, the, uh, I just noticed that uh, I, I jumped the gun here. Go ahead and move it up. I'd already, had, I'd already introduced all you guys. It's the presidential reality show. But when it became an Oprah production, it became slick. You don't have a president, you have an actor. They say that politics is show business for ugly people. You got it.